Welcome back to this afternoon session. It's my pleasure to uh, introduce you with uh, Marco Durante, but uh, he does not need a lot of introduction. Just quickly to say that he is currently the director at GSI Elmot Center for Avion Research, and Marco will tell us uh, a lot about um, this proton and heavy ion impact combined with uh, flash. Marco, the stairs is yours. You have 25 minutes and then five minutes of question and answer. We need to be tight on time. For now, I see your screen. You need to go full screen. I will do my best. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. You're very good. Much. Thank you all for uh, attending. So, I was given the title uh, protons and carbon ions, but you will see that my lecture will focus mostly on carbon ions. The reason I think is very simple. In this meeting, we have we seen so much work uh, ongoing with protons. Uh, so I thought uh, that for the audience was more interesting to have an update on heavy ions. That is a topic uh, that was uh, considered uh, quite a lot at the beginning of this uh, flash uh, adventure. So we will see where we are. Uh, I just want to start uh, with, okay, I have nothing to disclose, just important to say. So that's the outline of my presentation. So we will, first I will say something about the flash technology, then why we want to talk about heavy ion flash, high flash, I called it. Uh, then I will show you the first results with carbon ions, and finally a little bit on the outlook. So first, I'd like to show this slide, I mean, to, to, which many of you probably know, it, but I'm always impressed. It's the boom of flesh. Uh, this is a poll on, uh, in Astro, you know, of course, the big meeting Astro in 2018. The question was, what is the one big discovery that needs to be translated in the clinic right now? And in 2018, you have very reasonable answers to say immunotherapy, of course, oligometastasis, stereotactic body therapy, hyperfractionation, liquid biopsies. But in 2019, out of the blue, you have the first point flesh. So that's just to tell you how hot is the topic. And I think this meeting is exceeding the most optimistic uh, uh, estimates that we did on participation. So it's really, really fantastic. Now, but all these wonderful things, how do we do them? This is a, a, a published uh, uh, plot from a paper in 2020 that shows the employed facilities, maybe it should be updated now because things are changing so quickly. But essentially you see that all the facilities are either electrons where everything started or photons in this picture is mostly uh, synchrotron uh, soft X-rays or protons. So this is fine. I mean, it can be done. So that's why I will focus on carbon ions, because I want to add a couple of points here. But first, a few words on the time structure, which is something extremely important in flesh. So it's not only important the dose rate, but also the dose per pulse and the total irradiation time. And as a matter of fact, you see in this paper from Wilson et al. in Frontiers Oncology uh, of, uh, of last year, they kind of look for the ideal uh, uh, time structure, you know, which includes uh, uh, dose per pulse, more than one gray, total dose, uh, more than about 10 gray, and mean dose rate, uh, more than about uh, in the order of 100, 100 gray per second. So that's what we try to do with carbon ions. And this is so important, you know, that there is this other very famous plot from uh, a paper from Montaigne Grill that is trying to summarize in 2020, I think there are many more points now that should be added after this meeting. But in 2020, this was the situation with the two variables, the irradiation time for delivering 10 gray in seconds and the dose rate in the pulse in gray per second and uh, is divided in those where the flash effect was observed and those where flash effect was not observed. What we will see today is approximately here. We will add a couple of points uh, coming from HIT, the synchrotron, medical synchrotron in Heidelberg, and from GSI, the, uh, uh, the nuclear physics uh, 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 instrument in, uh, in Darmstadt. 
and uh, you will you will uh, um, and we will add then a couple of points with uh, with uh, with carbon ions. Now this is again from the same paper of uh, Wilson. It's a table where all the different uh, modalities are uh, are explained, and in this uh, paper in this table. Uh, we can actually see the the um, the different uh, accelerators that were used or could be used for flash, uh, and in particular um, here it's interesting. You see uh, here synchrotrons are mixed with cyclotrons. So, uh, but uh, at that time, yes, was really referring to cyclotrons. But what is interesting here is that the author state that flash effect might be lost with beam scanning and or higher LT. And that's the point where I want to go now. So what's the story of the scanning? The story of the scanning, you see here a nice movie, is that essentially, if you take the synchrotron cycle, you know, normally five, five to 10 seconds, and each energy step requires a new cycle, then you realize that it's practically impossible to do uh, 3D conformal multi-layer raster scanning uh, in flash conditions. And that's something that today was touched upon also by, by Tony Lomax in his talk. So, uh, and in fact, at the moment, uh, the, the, the technique which is uh, very often used is the transmission beam. This is what has been used in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the clinical trial ongoing in uh, Cincinnati. And these and other approach has been also already shown this morning by, by Tony Lomax. But in short, of course, here you sacrifice completely the, the, the principle of particle therapy, which is the 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 black peak so of course uh, you can argue that you don't need the black peak uh, if you have flesh because you spare the normal tissue anyway thanks to flesh but i can counter argue that if flesh goes on top of the uh, peak to plateau ratio that you have with the uh, with the uh, particle therapy you you will be much better off the clinical advantage will be much much more significant so oh so, so what is our, our proposal here? Our proposal is simply to use uh, this uh, uh, 2D range modulators. These are 3D printed modulators uh, that in a single, in a single uh, uh, scan uh, can give you a 3D conformal, very conformal. Today, Tony Lomax said many times that it's important not to lose conformality, but with these objects, we don't lose conformality. And, uh, but we gain enormously speed because, of course, we can do a, a spread out break peak uh, in, a, uh, um, in the time of a single raster scan. And for more, you can see the uh, lecture of Yuri Simeonov, which is an on-demand lecture, so it's all the time available. And he goes more in details here on the, how these range modulators work and why they are really ideal uh, for flash. Now, the other point, uh, so one point was the scanning. The other point is the high LT mechanism. So what is the mechanism of flesh? I think we have so many lectures uh, in this, uh, in this, uh, um, in this uh, meeting about uh, flesh mechanism. So I will not go into details. It's a nice cartoon from the paper that we published with Uli Weber and Emanuele Schifoni this year on medical physics. Uh, where essentially we try to see where are uh, physical stage, pre-chemical stage, chemical stage, heterogeneous chemistry stage in comparison to a flash pulse and to the time to deliver 10 gray conventional and with flash. There's no doubt, of course, that the chemical stage is critical to explain flash. I think we all agree on this point. Uh, of course, we don't fully agree on what is the mechanism because still we don't have a clear evidence. You all know, we so many times, oxygen depletion has been proposed, uh, free radical production and recombination, intertrack effects, uh, sparing of the immune system, and also something else that I'm sure I forgot. This is a nice uh, cartoon from our uh, chair today, Marie Catrin from the Radiation Research Society last year. But you know, that is 
essentially the most important part of this cartoon is the big question mark here, in the sense that we really don't, know. we have several hypotheses, but we don't have a solid uh, explanation of the mechanism at the moment. What is interesting for this lecture is that all these mechanisms are LET dependent. So whatever is the mechanism, you expect to see a dependence on the LET. And at the moment, uh, as you have seen in the, in the, in the, in the previous slide, at the moment, uh, you see pro proton, electron, DC, X-rays, everything has been done with, uh, with uh, uh, low LT radiation. So why we are interested in heavy ion flash or high LT flash? <coughs> three reasons. I, I, there can be many reasons, but I give you three. So first, uh, the, the most obvious, uh, we want to widen the therapeutic window in carbon ion therapy. There are 12 centers worldwide making carbon ion uh, therapy. We definitely would like to widen the, the, the therapeutic window and many more are in planning stage, including one in the United States. So it will be the first one in the United States after, of course, the Berkeley trial. And in fact, the second point has to do with the Berkeley trial and Cornelius Tobias idea at that time, we are talking about the seventies of the, of the past century, he really wanted to use very heavy ions like neon or even argon, because when you go to this high LT, you can really smash the, uh, the oxygen radio resistant, the hypoxic radio resistant of the uh, radio resistance of the tumor. But of course, the use of these ions is uh, severely hampered by the toxicity in the entrance chamber. So maybe with flesh, we will be able to use them because we can actually uh, spare the normal tissue. And third, uh, and from the research point of view, maybe one of the most interesting, we want to use ILT to understand the flash mechanism. So most of the current hypothesis will predict the decreased uh, sparing effect at high LT. Is this true or not? What do we see when we go to heavy ions? You know, somehow is a test for the models to go to higher LT. So these are the three reasons. What did we do? This is a video where I left the original audio, so I will shut up for a second. Listen carefully. Yeah, come on. I hope you could hear. It's the first time that we saw a flash dose delivery with carbon ions is in Heidelberg. And from the voices, you see, they were waiting for the beam and then they si finally see the beam and they are all very excited. I think it was, is funny and uh, tells you, you know, that uh, very often scientific research is, uh, is fun, is surprise and, uh, and, uh, and is excitement. This dates back now 2019. That's the first time we could do it in Heidelberg and we did it with these conditions. You see, this is done in the Heidelberg synchrotron, a strong collaboration with the crew of the, the heat accelerator. The beam was uh, 278 MeV per nucleon, and uh, the, the, it's about zero. You see the, the, the parameters here, seven per 10 to the eight uh, ions per spill available, which means 0 0.5 per 10 to the eight spill, the ions per second. That's the, the, the extraction. Uh, you will find more in this publication and also in the uh, lecture of Uli Weber, Uli Weber tomorrow. What is important, you know, is that uh, the dose rate was around 40, 60 gray per second, the average dose rate. But the field is very small, it's 10 by 10. That's what can be done at the moment uh, in Heidelberg. And again, for dosimetry, please uh, go to the Uli Weber talk tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Uh, these were the biological results. So with these small fields, we focused on in vitro results. And these are now published in the Red Journal. So if you are interested, you can find all the details on the, uh, on the, on the, on the Red Journals. And this is the survival of uh, CHOK1 cells after 7.5 gray carbon 280 MeV per nucleon. And you see that we actually saw an increase, now C means conventional and F means flash, and this is the oxygen, the, the oxygen concentration. So you see that in oxic conditions, we saw no effect. These are two different experiments. 
uh, in total anoxia, we also saw no, no clear effect, but in uh, moderate hypoxia, you see 4% and 0.5%, you have an increased survival with flesh. Of course, these are in vitro data. I would like to stress that I think uh, flesh is a tissue effect. It's really, a, a, we need in vivo data to understand a little bit more. So we actually did uh, apply, the, again, you see in this video here with the original audio, now you see the flesh uh, here appearing on the screen now at GSI. And this is now a, a higher, a fairly higher rate because we have three to five per 10 to the nine ions per seal compared to the uh, five per 10 to the eight uh, in Heidelberg. So we can scan a much higher, a much higher field like 20 by 20 uh, um, um, and, and having, having a much, a much better, much better result. So this is, you see, 13.4 gray in 200 milliseconds. Now, based on this uh, exciting uh, tests uh, performed in 2019, uh, we applied to the program advisory committee of GSI for beam time uh, in 2020 with three different protocols. Uh, uh, protocol zero is really uh, proposed by DKFZ, by the group of Amir Abdullahi, but they, they come to GSI because they have a broader field. They want to irradiate the thorax of the mouse to look for fibrosis. And this is, you see, micro CT. They are really expert in uh, radiation-induced lung fibrosis and fibrosis index. Protocol one is done with this system, you see, where you have the two legs of the animals on different sides. So in principle, you can have plateau here and Bragg peak here, for example, even though the first experiments, we did everything in the entrance channel. Uh, and finally, we have a third one, which is all focusing on uh, um, immune response, but this still has not been, uh, uh, has not been done. The model for this mouth, for this tumor, because in the, in the protocol zero, there's no tumor, it's only normal tissue, but I think it's very important to go uh, to measure both uh, NTCP and TCP. And the model we use is a murine osteosarcoma LM8 uh, in, uh, in C3H. This was implanted one week before uh, the exposure to radiation. This was the experiment now. Uh, this is the setup. Of course, here is the uh, 3D printed range modulator where you can do your uh, uh, spread out drag peak. Uh, and we reached uh, something like in the order of 100 gray per second uh, with 5 per 10 to the 9 ions per spill. Again, you see here the video. These are the mice uh, anesthetized, of course. And then boom, you have seen the... the, the shot of this uh, 18 gray at uh, 100 gray per second single steel irradiation. And this is how it looks like, you see, in, uh, in, at the end, uh, these are all the mice. It's a GAF chromic that shows the irradiation of the thorax. This comes from the protocol zero. So you see the irradiation of the thorax of all, uh, of all these mice in, in, in flesh condition. Now, a little bit of results. These are, of course, preliminary results because while the in vitro data we have published, this is still not published. So uh, they have to be taken with a grain of salt, but still, I think they are very interesting. Uh, you see here the tumor control. Tumor control, it's interesting because you see, this is the unirradiated control where, of course, the tumor is not controlled but you have essentially tumor, very long uh, growth delay, at least as this is up to 25 days, looks like essentially you control the tumor with a single dose of 18 gray. And apparently the, the, the flesh here, the triangles is flesh, is a bit lower than uh, conventional. These are standard error of the mean. So I will not, uh, uh, I will not make any statement here before repeating the experiment, but we can, I think we can safely say that there is no evidence that with flesh, you have a sparing effect with carbon, at least. Now, whether it's even more effective, I don't know, but th these are the data. 
and also you have some skin exfoliation you see here on the tumor it, on the surface itself and this was observed in four out of six animals irradiated with conventional uh, dose rate but in only one out of seven animals irradiated with flesh again an indication of a sparing effect here of the normal tissue because we are talking about skin exfoliation this is now the analysis of the muscle. This is the, 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 the leg directly exposed to the beam. Uh, these are histological sections taken by Professor Palmina Simoniello. So I, I take the occasion to thank her. Uh, I don't have quantitative data yet because these are recent results, but qualitatively, you can immediately appreciate the profound difference in the structure between flesh. Uh, and flesh is here. You see, it's very regular. Looks like a normal, uh, a normal muscle. And this is a fairly disorganized uh, um, uh, image coming from the uh, leg irradiated at conventional dose rate with the 18 gray of carbon ions. Now, particularly intriguing, I think, is the lung metastasis. This is a tumor that makes a lot of lung metastasis. So you see, this is the control. Uh, with no tumor, you see very clean lungs. Uh, while if you see the control with tumor, you see many, many metastases in the tumor. Now, these are the radiation with conventional and flesh. And on purpose, we show that there is a lot of variability. So sometimes in both cases, you see, sometimes you see a lot of metastases, sometimes you don't. But if you really take a section of the lung and you analyze, uh, the, the percentage of tumor with lung metastasis, which is easier than counting the metastasis, because sometimes they are really overlapping. That's what looks like flesh radiation is here, conventional radiation is here, and control is here. So at the first, uh, in the first experiments, 28 days post irradiation, you see that uh, the conventional irradiation is already has a sort of uh, uh, reduction of lung metastasis in this system, but when you use flesh irradiation, the, the reduction is even stronger. So very, very intriguing, very intriguing results, I would say. Uh, and finally, let's go to the, to the conclusions. Uh, so in conclusion, I think we show that uh, there is an increasing preclinical evidence of both normal tissue sparing and unchanged tumor uh, control at flash dose rate, uh, for sure for electrons, protons, and soft X-rays, all low LET radiation. Heavy ion flash, high flash is interesting both for the translational potential into clinical settings and to understand the, the flash mechanism. We reached, we have shown that this, uh, uh, from the technical point of view, is possible to reach uh, physical conditions, uh, flash condition at synchrotrons, uh, with carbon ions, and we did it both at the HIT and GSI synchrotrons in Germany. First in vitro results now published show increased cell survival in hypoxic condition with carbon ions in flash conditions, and you can find it in the paper. And the first in vivo results that I showed here for the first time point to a maintained TCP and decreased toxicity and metastasis with high energy carbon ions. Preliminary results, as I said, I mean, I, I will not uh, draw a strong conclusion here, but you see the data that come from the from the first test. With this, I really like to uh, thank uh, uh, all my group at GSI. You see, it's a, it's a very big group, uh, mixing physicists, biologists, uh, chemists, engineers, uh, and we really work on uh, uh, heavy particle effects. And let me just use in the first slide some special thanks, uh, of course, to the funding agencies in my department, but also to Uli Weber, who is talking tomorrow, and Walter Tinganelli from my group, that are the two people more involved in these experiments, together with many others. Emanuele Schifoni, who is always our consultant uh, at TIFPA and whose input is always welcome. Thomas Haberer and the whole uh, Heidelberg uh, uh, ion therapy crew that has been really essential for doing the first experiments in Heidelberg, and Amir Abdullahi and his DKFZ team for his participation now in uh, the experiment at GSL. Thank you very much.
Well, excellent, Marco. Very fascinating uh, last results on the mats. And uh, you're right on time. So we have time for questions. And there was some question uh, from the early uh, early beginning of your of your talk i have quite a few of them so um I, I would like to 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 take the time to try to go through all the first one so if you could answer quite quickly because there is uh, <laughs> yeah, at least eight I'll of them um dejan uh, trojavik asks you um how to solve the problem of painting transverse scanning in less than 90 milliseconds and i think you already answered but yeah, in fact, I mean, the, 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 the issue here is that you must have a very high number of ions per spill and you have to use a 3D uh, range modulator so that you only scan one time and you don't have 3D conformal scanning. And in the, in the same range, uh, a question from Yanis Schauer. Uh, what can you say about the ideal pulse structure to optimize the flash effect? Ah, this is this I cannot answer in uh, shortly. <laughs> it's a very good question, and uh, it could even be that it's not the same time structure with protons and with the heavy ions. I'm not sure about that. So at the moment, you see, I show this nice paper from uh, Wilson where they give an indication of what seems to be the ideal uh, time uh, the ideal time structure but uh, whether what is it here but whether this uh, really applies uh, all the time is definitely you, you you cannot take it from my data because i should try many different combinations and that's a little bit too much i guess um, next question, and I will combine two um, two people uh, from Karen Kirby and Joao Seco, and it's about the reduction of the metastasis. Uh, do you have any hypothesis, any thought? How can it be? Yes. So we are we have used this very same model. Uh, so this the LMA the osteosarcoma in C3H for a completely different experiment in combination with checkpoint inhibitors. And we had already found that it was quite sensitive to carbon ion exposure. So somehow the, the fact that you see a reduction uh, with conventional exposure is not surprising us because we know that this is already the case and we attribute it to the uh, cell death mechanism following heavy ions compared to X-rays. So we believe that uh, after heavy ions, you have a, a cell death mechanism, which is more immunogenic. This is also published in the, on, the, uh, on, uh, uh, on the Red Journal. We were surprised to see that flash seems to be even more effective. But this could have to do again with the fact that here the cell death after flesh could be even more immunogenic than before, or you have more cells that, that, that die through immunogenic, immunogenic pathways. The protocol two that we have in the list, you have seen a, a protocol zero, protocol one, and protocol two, well, is completely dedicated to study the immune response after flesh. So I hope to be able to give a more comprehensive result in Barcelona. Excellent. Another uh, question in the follow-up by Aral Paganetti, and it's about also the reduction uh, rate of METs. Uh, um, could it be by protecting vasculature? What do you think about this hypothesis? I think it fits in your picture. It's very interesting. Uh, it's very interesting, even though I, I really have to think about because you know somehow the metastasis exploit the vascular the vascular system to migrate uh, in the body. So I don't know if uh, uh, saving the the, the 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 vascular would explain a reduction in metastasis. It's definitely it's definitely very interesting, of course, but something something we have to explore. Another question, I think it's going to be the last from Charlie Mullis, um, saying that uh, the data on lung mats are, are great. And uh, he, he is questioning uh, uh, whether it does worth it, all this effort about the carbon ion. Uh, what could be the benefit um, gained by moving to high LET modalities as compared with low LET? It's a more general type of questions. 
of question. Right. Well, I think I think I gave my motivations here. If I understood well the Charlie's question, Charlie is also very familiar with the ILT, so <laughs> I think he knows already. These are my motivations, if you want, you know. So to use actually, hopefully, to use carbions in clinics. To go back to Berkeley, back to Berkeley, where the idea was to use heavier ions, and also in, I think now, maybe the most uh, easy and most uh, urgent uh, uh, point is to try to use this data to explain the mechanism of flesh. I think they help a lot. I mean, already the fact that we see a flesh effect with carbon ions is, is important. I think it's significant because uh, uh, there were, uh, I'm sure Marika Tren will remember at the PTCOG, there was a lot of discussion saying essentially that people were not expecting to see any flesh effect with carbon ions, but we do see it. So whatever model you like, you have to explain that you see it also with, the, with carbon ions. Okay, excellent. I think we need to close the session because I need to jump in the in the next one. Uh, I, I really thank you, Marco. You have many more questions in the chat. So if you can take a little bit of time to answer those questions, I guess that the people is going to be very um, interested. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you to everyone and see you soon. Bye.